Please take note after the reading uh, that we will sing the canticle or the responsory on page 231. A reading from St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise on their hands me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The very beginning, or really before Vesper starts, we have this confession from Compline. The reason I wanted to put it there is, well, there's no confession of sins in Vespers, and also that I wanted to draw from what it means to truly repent. I don't think, I, I, for my own preferences, I suppose, I don't think that this, con- that it gets any more personal of a confession than this confession in Compline. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous, grievous fault. Wherefore I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me of all of my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. There's three mea culpas there. That is, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. In there, we have, in those three mea culpas, we have a frailty. It shows exactly how our flesh laid bare grants us. Even in the beginning of this confession, I confess my sins before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, celestial and terrestrial. I confess my sins that I have done wrong before the angels, the archangels, and all the company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters. Why? Because there are not two churches. There is one church. One church on two fronts. One front is the triumphant glory. The other front is a military front. And we are given weapons to fight with. And here is one of those weapons that we would confess our sins, not only to God, but to one another. For to love God is to love one another. And since that's true, 
to confess our sins to God, we also should confess our sins to one another. But it really gets to the heart of confession when we see that threefold fault. By my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. This is as low as I have ever been. My sins are laid open for everyone to see. I have sinned against you, against God, and against the creation, against the church, and against those in the church. These three faults bring out of us a great nervousness and a great um, uh, uneasiness. And we go from here to there over waterless places as we heard in our gospel from this morning. As demons go across waterless places, so we too go across waterless places parched and wanting something. And we don't know exactly what that is, but we are, we are starving for it, or shall we say, thirsting for it. And we don't know exactly what it is, but our heart yearns out for it. What is this thing that eludes sinful man so well? What is this thing that my heart yearns for, and yet I sit in sackcloth and ashes? The answer is quite clear. Absolution. The forgiveness of sins. Our hearts yearn for that. And if we not get it before men, we will get it before God. But we should strive to love each other enough to forgive one another. For God will be just and mer merciful unto us according to His Son, Jesus Christ. Christ grants us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of our sins. We are sewn back up. We are hewn by the, by the sculptor. Our hearts have been placed securely in our chests and balm has been used to cover our wounds. That balm is no other than Christ. And it's in that absolution, it's in that forgiveness of sins that we see exactly what Christ does for those in whom He loves. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The great Saint Augustine once wrote, that our hearts are, une are uneasy until they find rest in God. And this is most certainly true. But when we find that rest, when we find that absolute balm, we find this. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. We find rest in Christ. For His yoke is placed upon us and is easy, and His burden is light. Because He loves His whole creation. And for us, we who by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, have done him wrong. He says this, I forgive you. As far as the east is from the west, do I forgive you. In these words, there is absolute finishness, finishing. And in that finishing, we not only receive rest, we receive everlasting life.
Amen.